This is maybe the most important thing that we're facing right now, next to obviously the same pressures you were getting for the hardcore Marxists. Yeah. We are getting battered and bashed by folks that don't understand money creation, central banking, et cetera. They conflate the IOUs of banks, the bank money, if you will, with sovereign money that is created in a net financial asset driven uh, way. They're confusing the, the zeroing out of bank loans versus net financial asset creation. Can you please break down the money creation process so that people have a better understanding of the difference? Maybe even talk a little bit about the hierarchy of money so they understand that money and currency and all these different things are, are different terms. Can you take a crack at that? Uh, well, we'll see. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the the commercial banks under under in the advanced world and everywhere really, they do create money. Uh, and so, for those MMTs, and I call them the sort of internet MMTs, which isn't a put down, but they're the sort of second generation. They're the they're the f foot soldiers, to use your terminology. They sometimes say, oh, yeah, but MMT thinks that the banks don't create money. And uh, and when they find out that we say that the commercial banks can create money, they some of the ones who are, have a peripheral commitment start worrying about this, uh, the point you made earlier, that, oh, we're just apologists for the banking sector because, of course, I'm on the record for a long period of time as... Uh, as being an antagonist to this movement called positive money, which wants to eliminate uh, the commercial bank's ability to basically c create deposits out of loans. Uh, but the banks do create money. But the point that you're, you're, you're trying to tease out is a different one. And that's why MMT is tend not to talk about money, they talk about net financial assets. Now, when the banks create a, a loan, they immediately, loans create a deposit, and that creates a stream of liquidity that can be drawn by the uh, possessor of the loan, the person who's gone into debt, to buy whatever they like. So in that sense, uh, the commercial banks, through their, their lending capacity, and their, their deposit creation capacity can create liquidity, purchasing power. There's no doubt about that, that's fine. And we want them to do that uh, because that's a, that's a convenience for all of us if it's properly regulated and uh, it doesn't go out of control. But the point about it is that the, when the bank's creating that liability, or, or think about it another way, when the bank's creating its loan, which for us, for it is an asset, and for us is a liability, those two things in financial terms net out to zero. In other words, there's an equal asset created for the liability that's created. So there's nothing net created. There's a, a stream of purchasing power created, but it's not a net addition to financial wealth and moreover the bank who clearly has the capacity to do that under our and under the sort of normal operations of our financial system they also have to cover that deposit in one way or another by adding to reserves because when you say you or I have a loan when we start spending the, de the deposit funds that have been created under that loan, and let's say we uh, we we spend it on something that uh, uh, the stream of uh, it flow of income goes to an, a person who banks in a different bank, and they put that money in that that stream of funds in their bank. Well, then at the end of the day, the there's going to be a call on the originating bank for the the funds, and that's all mediated through the payment system, through the reserves that the commercial banks keep at the central bank. 
So you, the, the, the loan originator has to get the funds from somewhere to honour the deposits. Otherwise, you know, the cheque bounces, as to use the parlance. And so there's a whole variety of ways in which the banks can get those reserves. They can get them in wholesale funding markets. They can get them from attracting deposits or they can get them from their other banking competitors at a, at a particular rate, depending upon, and where they'll access those funds from depends upon the, uh, the, the, the cost benefit, the profitability of, of different sources of funding the reserves. So the banks can, can create money via loan creation, but they, they don't get to, they've got to ultimately cover those and there's nothing net created. Whereas when a government spends, it's spending without having the necessity in principle, and I'm, I'm abstracting from institutional arrangements that might be voluntarily put in place, you know, accounting arrangements where government spends from a particular bank, uh, you know, particular account or something. But, but in conceptual terms, a, a, a currency issuing government can spend without limit, really, uh, up to infinity, uh, uh, without having a prior source of funds. And when it does that, it creates something net in the non-government sector. It creates net wealth increment in the non-government sector in the same way that when it withdraws funds from the non-government sector via taxation, it destroys net non-government sector wealth. And that's unique to the currency issuer and it's quite a different process to the way in which commercial banks create purchasing power through the loan deposit process. How's that? That was fantastic, sir. That was absolutely beautiful.